I think that I clicked the right button for this thing to be recording, otherwise it would have flashed. So I'm going to uh, get into my book review from Let's see here. Uh, it's called Killing the Legends by Bill O'Reilly, author of 18 number one bestsellers. And it talks about John Lennon, Elvis Presley, and Muhammad Ali. Now, with Elvis Presley, he was saying that his biggest selling hits were in the mid 50s, which is around the time that I was born. I was aware of the song about the hound dog, I enjoyed that. Um, I later heard that a black lady had sung it before Elvis. I don't know if she wrote it, Big Mama Thornton. But then I later found out as well that what she had did was also quite popular. Um, I used to enjoy uh, the movies that Elvis did. They had pretty girls on them. Later I uh, uh, much more of a fan of Elvis, but Frankie Avalon had more beach uh, girls and things than, than Elvis. But uh, I found out that Elvis didn't want to do those type of, um, of movies. Uh, he was in movies with Anne Margaret, who also had done TV specials with Bob Hope. Um, they talked about Colonel Tom Parker, who I think was getting a 50% commission uh, for being Elvis's manager. And then I think they said he got, Elvis got maybe 10% of the record sales, which was not as good of a deal of other major stars like the Rolling Stones. Um, well, let me move on to, and of course he talked about Elvis abuse of drugs and marrying Priscilla, I think, when she was underage. Now I'm gonna move on to John Lennon, who Richard President Richard Milhouse Nixon had tried to deport because he felt that Lenin could help him lose an election and because Lenin had been accused of breaking uh, drug laws and uh, the song Cold Turkey, which is a very up-tempo song, wherein Lennon talks about it was about the pain of drugs, but this book revealed that he continued to use hard drugs after this song was made. Um, now, of course, the last person that he dealt with was Muhammad Ali, and I took some notes. Uh, he said on page 180, um, that Ali won his second title against Joe Frazier, which was incorrect. So a man with a history degree like him and a prolific New York Times best-selling author 
should not be making a blatant mistake like that. said that Herbert Muhammad had very little experience and managed a dry cleaner before becoming a boxing manager. said that Herbert Muhammad had told him to put two and a half million dollars uh, in escrow in order to pay taxes, but the money disappeared after he had recommended an attorney to handle this for Ali. Now, I also had read a book called Running With the Champ, where um, the author spoke of Herbert Muhammad cheating Ali out of his money and how Ali had went out of his way to get a Chicago banker to handle his finances and that he was so anxious to get up to that banker that he had peed in the elevator while going up to see him. And uh, O'Reilly claims that uh, Ali had kidney trouble. I'm trying to, I don't remember for certain if he said it, it started in the Thriller in Manila fight, but he later, uh, if not exclusively, said it was from a Leon Spinks fight. So this is more than one book that have talked about this. It says that Herbert Muhammad claimed money he owed Ali was used to pay other taxes, but a um, what is this? But basically, you know, he couldn't really prove that, and the lawyer that was recommended to Ali. Um, was ordered to pay $390,000 from money that he got from Ali. I remember in the book Running with the Champ that that Chicago banker did a much better job of managing Ali's money. And it says the New York Times um, reported Ali gave the Nation of Islam prestige and income operations. Now, they said Ali didn't directly pay the Nation of Islam, but Herbert Muhammad did. And then they said that, uh, and Herbert had access to Ali's bank account and uh, used that money to open up uh, a mass jid in Chicago. They also had a point in the book where now Ali was fighting a, an in, what's considered an inferior appoint, uh, um, opponent, John Pierre Koopman, where Herbert Muhammad got very upset with him that he didn't knock the guy out quicker and threatened to leave the arena uh, if Ali didn't do so. He says, well, Ali went on and knocked the guy out. But uh, O'Reilly was trying to imply that some sort of physical harm could have come to Ali and it's really not giving much of a rationale for this hypothesis. Now, he said that after Elijah had died that 
uh, uh, Herbert Muhammad was number two in the NOI organization. Says that Ali was listed as a founder of Herbert Muhammad's Masjid. Warren Beatty wanted Ali in a movie, but Herbert and his brother Warroff would not approve because they said it went against Muslim teaching. And what the plot of the movie was, and the name was Heaven Can Wait, where they wanted Ali to come back as a reincarnated uh, boxer. Now, I know there was a TV series called Heaven Can Wait with um, Michael Landon. And I did do a video on uh, Michael Landon, the wolf and the wolf man. I think if you put in Archie Thomas, Michael Landon, Wolfman movie, you should be able to bring up my um, review of, um, of that movie. Michael Landon uh, played on Bonanza for many years. Said Ali gave money to Harold Smith to form Ali Sports, but Smith was convicted of embezzlement. Ali blames damned Muslims, his words according to O'Reilly, for him uh, fighting again. And he had reference to the Larry Holmes fight in which um, Ali was TKO'd and uh, he had lost an awful lot of weight and a lot of people thought, well, maybe he had a chance since he had lost all that weight that I know uh, my dad took me out to the closed circuit at what was then called the Capitol Center and uh, Landover, Maryland, and he kept saying there's something wrong with that man. Speaking of Ali, he said he's not sweating, you know, and um, just like I had heard about Joe Lewis having a long, sad night against Rocky Marciano, it was this type of thing with um, Ali and Larry Holmes. What is this? Oh, it says Farrakhan uh, kept NOI uh, stuff going and said he used hateful, racist things and anti-Semitic from Elijah Muhammad. Now, Bill O'Reilly also said that Ali had received flawed racial information from Elijah Muhammad. And then at the back of his book, he was talking about Abraham Lincoln and George Washington and was saying that, well, nobody is perfect and do we forget about the good that these men had done. Well, they said that Mussolini, and I did do a video about Mussolini, Archie Thomas Mussolini in the YouTube search. Um, and they said that, I think that maybe he made the trains run on time, but that doesn't cause people to talk about the many bad things you do. Now, if somebody 
murders or enslaves somebody, you don't say, well, what about the good that they did? You condemn and punish them for the bad. Now, I did a um, video called Judge Slavery by Its Time, Bill O'Reilly and Charles Krauthammer, where I discussed uh, uh, whether it was fair to say, well, you can't judge slavery by today's standards. And I um, addressed that. There was a strong abolitionist movement. Jefferson tried to put something into the Declaration of Independence about it, and he was not allowed to. Um, and Abraham Lincoln, before the Civil War, had done a speech called A House Divided, um, and it spoke about the evils of slavery during the Lincoln-Douglas debate. So, plus, uh, England had outlawed slavery long before America did, and certainly America was aware of what England was doing. So. Why do we keep saying that, well, they were just people of their times and, well, nobody is perfect? I think it's a little more serious than just nobody is perfect. It's a difference in normal imperfection and outright bad things. Now, uh, Ye had got in trouble for saying that Hitler did some good uh, certainly there were some positive aspects to his um, ability, however evil and wicked that they were. Um, but you just don't excuse people for things. Now, for example, Osama bin Laden. America didn't forgive Osama bin Laden. They just upped and killed the man. Um, Saddam Hussein. They said they had no proof of um, what's called um, the weapons of mass, of mass destruction, but there was no forgiveness there. The man was killed. But when it comes to blacks, uh, suffering centuries of cruel slavery, whippings, rapes, murders, castration, etc., all where there is forgiveness. Well, there's a such thing as we forgiving people as individuals, but the state being responsible. And that's why the reparations movement is is out here. I think I heard in a movie something said, may God have mercy and the state have none. And I also did a video on reparations. I did a commentary of the Ken Burns um, documentary about Mark Twain, where I also addressed the slavery issue. So this was a very fine uh, book. I recommend it. And see you later.